Non-Americans, what is the most shocking thing you saw when visiting the United States? Woke up early on vacation in Florida and the sidewalk outside my hotel was absolutely covered in lizards and it was amazing. Today I was in a shopping center and there was a woman pushing a push chair around however it wasn't a baby in there but two dogs. That's more common than I'd like to admit. Right aid, I can get a flu shot, HIV test, a bottle of tequila, Snickers bars and pizza pockets all from the same store, awesome, I hope, I can get an entire day's worth of calories in one meal. Also having one dollar notes made me feel like I was rich. I had a huge wad of notes, but like 20 of them were one dollar, but still, it's a nice feeling. I'm Vietnamese and when I moved to the US, cars outnumber motorcycles so it was like going to the future. The less shocking was seeing white and black people because I have never seen other races before. Went to a Walmart in Maine that was so huge the ceiling met the floor at a horizon. Also they sold liquor there on the cheap. I'm from Singapore and we're pretty much a conservative and reserved society. I visited the US for an elective program at UCLA. Go Bruins. And the thing that struck me most about America was everyone's friendliness or socialness. People just strike up conversations with you, ask how your day's been, and really connect with each other based on whatever's happening around them. The weather, how long the wait for the bus is, etc. And somehow these fleeting connections were very real and genuine to me. I came back home a much more enlightened person with my horizons very much broadened. So, thank you Americans, for showing me simple human kindness. French living in California. American are super friendly and will engage a discussion whenever they can. Oh and Americans speak very loud too. I was walking to Target the other day and this woman was shouting at me asking for directions. She wasn't panicked or angry or anything. She was just shouting. People wishing me a good morning and saying hello when I didn't even know them. Always had a misconception that Americans were mean and rude. Wouldn't say it would be shocking but just a tad startling. Basically flags. Flags everywhere. On the pavements. In the windows. On the side of buildings. Up poles. On cars. On doors. On posters. Pretty much anything it could be stuck to. Oh and the real comfy feeling of diners. Genuinely felt welcome in any I went for a cup of tea in. Always got a raised eyebrow and a question when I asked for hot tea instead of iced tea. That seems like such a strange idea, to go into a diner just for a cup of tea. I'm from Australia and I couldn't believe how high the water levels are in your toilet. My balls nearly touch the water haha. <laughs> also your drive through ATMs. Crazy. Yeah, when I went there, I suddenly realized why their toilets overflow when they get clogged. In Australia, the water in the flush isn't enough to overflow the bowl. So much types of fast food. Canadian as well, I'm used to like max 4 choices, but in the states there's like 15, and there's a definite hierarchy of quality. I'm American, but I'll live in Hawaii and visited Virginia, which was more than just a time change. I have never in my life seen so many restaurants, they are everywhere, it felt like every second business was a restaurant, and there weren't any hills where I was, so directions were given thus, take a left at the Golden Corral. Then right at the cracker barrel. If you get to the olive garden you've gone too far. The US is huge and even states adjacent to each other can be very very different from each other. The experience is a person who visits San Diego, California compared to rural West Virginia or Houston. Texas or Wyoming is very different. Thank you. Every non-American memorize this post. If you think McDonald's is cheap, you should go to Speedway. You can buy like 3 hot dogs and not even spend a dollar, these hot dogs will probably kill you if you eat too many of them, but still, they are cheap. Sam's Club, hot dog for 99 cents, 30 ounces drink 89 cents, combo 1 dollar and 70 cents, it's like, a huge butt hot dog too. Coming in from China, it was amazing how not crowded the public transportation was, well, after I got over the lack of public transportation, sure, rush hour was busy but I didn't have to wait for 3 trains to pass to rudely push my way into the subway, also no one stole my stuff. A homeless man in Seattle called me a good for nothing negro word for word, 
keep in mind that at the time this happened I was a 14 year old white kid with a steadier job than he had. When I was about 5 years old, I was walking in downtown Seattle with my dad, and an old homeless man with a feather in his hair came up to us, wagged his finger in my dad's face, and said in a deadly serious tone, now don't let that boy grow up to be a cowboy, forever seared into my memory. My cousin from Vietnam flew into America sometime in December and she recalled that her first reaction was, wow, there's so much sugar covering the ground it was snow, but she really thought we sprinkled sugar everywhere for shoots and giggles. Why she's never heard of snow, I don't know, but it was adorably hilarious. Yep, we frosted the north just for her. I just came back from 3 weeks USA, and I remember being shocked by the huge amount of diabetes products, in your average Walgreens, glucose meters everywhere. Here in Holland people don't just get diabetes, and if they do, it's mostly type 1. And then I tasted butterfingers. Frick, then I understood. As an Australian who just came back from America this year, what the frick man you guys have pretzel M&Ms, share that crap around frick give us tim tams brit with a short list after visiting florida one felt very very weird not recycling empties two battled by savory food getting a sweet accompaniment pancake batter corn dogs pizza and cookies etc three the cars being so big driving a crown vic felt like being a bus driver four everyone being so friendly Took me two days to figure out how to react to random conversations with strangers. Awesome trip. I never expected a culture shock. You probably should have recycled your empties. This is a common practice in the US. I lived in China until 1999 grade 5 in elementary school. Then our family moved to Dallas, Texas. Within the next year, the following things were very surprising to me. 1. Everything is ridiculously big. From the size of our apartment to people's houses to the size of roads to the length of time it takes to get downtown. We lived in North Dallas, near Arapaho and Hillcrest. 2. School classrooms resembled something like a wonderland. There were bright colors everywhere. Tables are put together into clumps instead of ordered in neat rows from back to front. Then there were stuffed paper mache animals on the walls with people's names on it. Cute little mailboxes for everyone. TVs and computers in every classroom, a cafeteria filled with tasty foods and snacks, and playgrounds with swings. 3. We were learning 405 equals 2000 in math class. 4. The nice people at church actually took their religion seriously, like, actually believed it to be real. I always thought religions were stories you learn because they were important cultural stories that had some education value, like the story of Prometheus giving fire to humans. For example, I used to teach English in China. I can see why you were so impressed about the state of American classrooms considering what the average Chinese classroom looks like. Your students are amazing to teach, though, even the naughty kids were a welcome break from the average British pupil. How hard it is to get a drink, I'm Irish and over 21 and in California, even with a passport and driver's license I was treated with skepticism. Blood started to enter my alcohol stream a few times while I was there, shudder. Brazilian here, everything is so freaking cheap, from food to soda to cars and computers, everything is a tenth of the freaking international price. Whenever my buddy goes to Brazil on vacation, he has family there, he buys a laptop, iPod, etc. And Ray sells it for like 10x the price. The Brazilian person gets a great deal, and he gets his vacation paid for. There were a few things, both awesome and scary which shocked. The obvious ones are food related obesity related, which have been said to death here and in other threads. For me, in a road trip across America, it was the sheer size of cities, towns etc along highways. Coming from Australia, the sheer number of people and large cities was astounding. NB I haven't been to China or India, and while I have traveled elsewhere, nothing compared to USA for me with regards to this. Tax, why not put a freaking price sticker that includes it so I don't have work out if I have enough money for everything. I went to a movie theater once where the prices were weird like $4.65 so that once you added taxes it came out to $5 even. Blew my mind. Canadian here. 
I first went to the US, in the 90s, when I was in my early teens. I had assumed that people would be rude and, worst case scenario, shoot me. I was shocked when people were friendlier than they were back home. So where yell from followed by a big grin was the most common occurrence. It was awesome. Whoa that is cheap. Maccas meals here in New Zealand cost at least $8 and are upwards of $10 for a hunger buster or anything bigger. A huge sing advertising hemcom with a big cannabis leaf. In Mexico we're killing each other in a stupid drug war and in the US is so casual that they have conventions. It really shocked me. Comma the US is so casual that 1 in 8 people in prison are there for marijuana related charges. I was on the west coast for about 2 months a couple of years ago. I'm from the Netherlands. Things that struck me. 1. Portion sizes. Your small pizza is our large pizza. Your medium pizza is our family pizza. Your large pizza doesn't fit inside our borders. 2. Clean streets. I saw a lot of $1000 littering fine signs. Must have worked. Because there wasn't so much as a cigarette but on the streets. 3. Space. You have a lot of it. Everything is bigger, taller, larger, wider and further apart. 4. Food is cheaper than in Europe. Alcohol is more expensive. 5. I figured out why you don't see a lot of American cars outside of America. I'll stop here before I insult people. 6. No aggressiveness at sport matches. I visited a Giants game in SF. And couldn't believe my eyes when a Giants and Cardinalston were sharing a couple of beers and eating hot dogs together, while cheering for different teams. In Europe, we have to separate soccer fans from the moment they arrive in the game city until the second they leave, to stop them from bashing each other's brains. Uh, heads in. Also, the entertainment value with all the songs and games is much higher than in European sports matches. TL. DR. When you're from Europe and visiting the USA, it's like somebody puts the contrast on your TV on maximum, and turns the volume up. Rich people are richer, poor people are poorer, sweets are sweeter, laws are stricter, sports are more fun, everything is bigger and man, do you guys build crappy cars? It's just football fans who can't be trusted in Europe. Rugby fans are allowed to sit next to each other and drink alcohol etc. When I came to the states from Bangladesh I was shocked how rich people are so skinny and poor people are so fat in my country it was the opposite. I knew everything in America was bigger, what I wasn't expecting to follow the rule was the weather. I got caught out in a lightning storm as I was heading back to my hotel. And dang, that was huge, far bigger than anything I'd encountered in the UK. Also, people were apparently worried about me because a tornado had passed within about 5 miles. I didn't see that one, however. I was also stunned by the size of Lake Michigan. I had a hard time telling myself that it wasn't the sea. You should see Lake Superior. It's absolutely massive. Live in Eastern Europe. There are squirrels here, but when I visited Washington, they were basically roaming the streets, instead of just sitting on trees like here. Not really shocking, just surprising. Since squirrels never get off trees here, and they live only in real forests, not parks etc. I spent a summer in Canada, but we went down to Chicago to go to Lollapalooza. On the way back our bus had a stopover in Detroit. We left the bus terminal to get some food, and passed by a taxi rank. One of the drivers asked you boys need a lift we politely declined, but he was eager as can be. What you want then? Weed we explained that we were about to cross the border into Canada and so didn't want any weed. Thanks. See? Pills no thanks. Kind of taxi man. H.I. was shocked. Taxi drivers in Ireland are reluctant to even drive anywhere. American taxi drivers are significantly more helpful, and seem to provide a much wider range of services. Other shocking things about America include, the drinking age being 21, quite how fat the fat people manage to get. That's not to say that all Americans are fat, just that those that are fat are really freaking fat. The existence of Four Loco, the people that hold rock and roll will kill your soul signs outside festivals. Heinz ketchup has different ingredients in America and is slightly less nice. I have cousins from Egypt that visited us here in Michigan. It was 75 and they kept on saying how cold it was, and they couldn't stop saying wow, you guys have a lot of trees here. 
showed someone who worked in a hotel in Mississippi my passport as a form of identification. She had never seen one before despite working in the hospitality industry. I believe her exact words were wow, you've got like a whole book there. Not a non-American story but still the most shocked I have seen a tourist. I live in East Tennessee and we had some friends from Los Angeles come out and visit us for the 4th of July. Evidently these two girls had never seen a lightning bug before. About the time it starts getting dark one girl runs in and yells, Kelly, they have bugs here that fly and light up everybody was thinking this was a joke until the other California girl's eyes widen and she says shut up. My boyfriend is from Mexico and the other day he asked me, why do Americans put their flag on everything? Like, underwear, plates, doormats if you did that with our flag, you'll be immediately arrested. I never thought of that before. It is kinda weird that we almost disrespect the flag by putting it on everything. That's kinda funny, as I was born in a border town and everything blankets, hats, home decorations, seem to have had the Mexican flag on it, maybe it's a newer thing. American here, analysis of this thread, people are nice, everything is cheaper. Massive food portions, even more massive people, and flags. You forgot religion. In the south, how in your face the religion was. Signs up on cafes, it being referred to a lot in conversation and just everywhere I got confronted by religion. The patriotism as well, such as flags being up in so many yards. I had heard this but I guess I didn't expect it to be so much like the stereotypes I imagined in my head. I found Americans insanely friendly as well, much more so than expected and this applied to all places I went to other than New York City. The size of meal portions at restaurants, often enough to feed two people, even chains that exist in Canada, so much more food at the American versions. I'm a South African, now US citizen who has been living here for 15 years. I still don't understand why Americans use a knife and fork the way they do. First, they take the fork in their left hand and knife in their right and cut up their food. Then they put down their knife, switch their fork to their right hand and then eat. If a piece of food is still too big, they will use the side on the fork to cut it. I was having dinner at a friend's house when their daughter asked, how come they don't put their knife down? That's bad manners. To which the mom replied, it's okay, that's just how they were brought up. And when we first moved here, I was trying to find reasonable international phone rates, before Skype and VoIP. Yes, I'm that old. But now bear in mind, I'm talking to an international call specialist, or whatever the heck they're called. Me, what are your rates to call South Africa? Them, what country in South Africa? Imam, me. South Africa is a country, them, it is, me, yes, the name of the country I want to call is South Africa, them, oh, please hold while I ask my supervisor, okay, you're right, there is a country called South Africa, Fasipum. I've never understood why people don't learn to use a fork in their left hand, and I was born and raised here in the US. I'm from India, I was in the US as a grad student. The first thing I noticed was, how huge the parking structures were and how much electricity was being wasted to light them up, especially during the weekends, when there was no one on campus. The lights are to discourage crime. New Zealand are here, I love traveling to the states, try to take the family every year and we'll be back there in 6 weeks, can't wait. I guess what shocked me initially was the visibility, acceptance and sheer number of the homeless, living under bridges etc. The next thing that shocked me was the incredible manners and courtesy people have towards one another. I also agree with OP. The food is so incredibly cheap, we can eat out, two adults, two kids, for literally half the price we can here in NZ, and gas is ridiculously cheap too. Homeless people everywhere. I was eating at an out in San Diego the other day and I was approached by two bums just by sitting outside. San Diego has, or at least was for a while, the homeless capital of the nation. It was the best weather all year round and a lot of accessible drugs, so many homeless flocked to San Diego. P.S. Thank you for serving justice to your trip to California by enjoying in and out Truly one of the best things CA can offer to the world. Ha ha ha. 
When I went to the US in 2001 the price of a gallon of gas was lower than that of a liter. One gallon equals roughly 3.8 liters in Germany. Plus, shockingly, my host mom did all cooking by herself and there were actual vegetables hug Cheryl. Haven't seen this mentioned, but it weirded me out how so many of the houses were made of wood. In Britain, the only comparable structures are sheds, basically everything else is brick or granite. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.